Hey guys, Dr. Whitney Bow here. Today's video is all about the skin microbiome and how to protect it, why it's important, and some of my favorite skincare products that contain probiotic technologies. For those of you who don't know me, I am Dr. Whitney Bow. I'm a board certified dermatologist in New York. I'm the author of the best selling book, The Beauty of Dirty Skin, which um, does share a lot of information about probiotics, both in the gut and on the skin, if you guys are interested. I also am the co-inventor of a patent uh, for actually a, a topical uh, probiotic technology that shows promise in the treatment of acne. And I think I was probably one of the first dermatologists to even use the word microbiome, start talking about the microbiome, specifically as it relates to the skin, way before it was sexy, way before it was a trend. Um, definitely is a hot trend right now. We're seeing the words prebiotics and probiotics pop up on tons of our skincare products, tons of beauty products. So I will be sharing lots of information about that during this video. And then I promise at the end, I will share some of my favorite products that contain pre, probiotic, postbiotic technologies. So here we go. What is the microbiome? So we have trillions of microscopic organisms, primarily bacteria that are living both in our gut and on our skin. So we have a gut microbiome and we have a skin microbiome. Now both are actually equally important when it comes to the health of our skin. Um, specifically in the gut, when the balance of bacteria is off, it leads to something called leaky gut. And we have some science suggesting that leaky gut and imbalance of bacteria in the gut is associated with the risk for certain diseases, including things like obesity and diabetes. And any inflammation in the gut leads to inflammation in the skin. So, you know, what we eat and maintaining a healthy microbiome in the gut is very, very important. This video is focusing more on the microbiome of the skin. So the same thing holds true with the skin. When the balance of bacteria on the skin is off, if it's shifted, um, then what can happen is that we can end up with something called leaky skin. And when you have that, it triggers inflammation in the skin. And that can actually manifest in a number of different ways. So, you know, for some people, it may show up as a chronic skin condition like acne, rosacea, eczema, psoriasis, but leaky skin, that sort of imbalance of bacteria on the skin can also accelerate signs of aging. So that can lead to things like uh, fine lines, wrinkles, loss of elasticity, dilated pores. Uh, so it's really critical to maintain a healthy skin microbiome. Okay, so not surprisingly, there is a ton of research right now going on in labs throughout the world looking at identifying prebiotic, probiotic, postbiotic technologies, how to restore and repair the microbiome, both for prescription drug, topical medications that are gonna you know, potentially cure or eradicate certain skin conditions that people struggle from, um, or at least keep them under control, uh, but also in over-the-counter products, cosmetic products, skincare products. We're seeing a lot of those um, come out even today. But before we even go there, before you start looking at adding um, either live bacteria or um, ingredients that promote the growth of certain bacteria to your skincare, you want to be really careful not to wipe out the good bugs that you already have, okay? So one of the best ways to preserve and support your microbiome is that you want to be careful about your cleansing routine. So you don't want to use a harsh cleanser. So try to avoid ingredients like SLS or SLES, sodium lauryl sulfate. It, those are harsh sulfates. They really strip your skin of natural oils that healthy bacteria need in order to thrive and survive. You also wanna be careful not to use any kind of cleansers or cleansing bars that have a high pH that are too alkaline. So you really wanna to try to stay away from alkaline types of soaps. Um, there is ways that you can test using a pH strip. You know, you can just order it online. So swipe it against your wet bar of soap and see if it's too alkaline. If it is, keep it away from your skin. That's not good for your microbiome. You also wanna start using your fingertips, guys. You know, you, you wanna to try to throw away any of the brushes, the loofahs, the buff puffs, abrasive scrubs. These are not good for your microbiome. In fact, you know, Clarisonic has gone out of business recently because there's more and more data, partly because there's more and more data showing that our microbiome and maintaining our microbiome is really critical to our skin health. And these sort of instruments that we thought were good for really getting that deep clean are actually doing more harm than good. 
I'm also not a fan of benzoyl peroxide. Uh, I do recommend it under very limited circumstances for certain patients um, who are really struggling with acne, but benzoyl peroxide, it basically sort of wipes out all of the bacteria on your skin in a very sort of non-specific, non-targeted way. I think that that is damaging for your microbiome um, if you feel like you really rely on it, if you really need it to help keep your acne under control because you can't use other ingredients or they're not successful for you, um, then I do recommend following your benzoyl peroxide use with a product that contains a prebiotic or, or probiotic technology to try to replenish and restore some of your healthy, good bugs in your microbiome. I'm also not a fan of topical or oral antibiotics. So, you know, that's something that a lot of dermatologists used to prescribe. It used to be one of the sort of cornerstones of acne therapy. You know, we would prescribe clindamycin. I remember growing up and I used a product called Cleosin T all the time on my face when I had a couple of blemishes um, going through those teenage years. Um, but really, I don't use, I still break out every now and then, and I don't use topical antibiotics on myself. And I rarely, rarely, if ever, prescribe them for my patients um, because it does harm your microbiome and lead to antibiotic resistance and long-term issues with your healthy microbiome. Okay, so now that you've stopped wiping out your good bugs, the next step is to consider adding probiotic technologies into your skincare routine. Now, guys, these are not going to replace your vitamin C, your alpha hydroxy acid, your retinol, okay? So those are tried and true workhorses, but prebiotics, probiotics, postbiotics, those are beautiful additions to your skincare routine, specifically when it comes to repairing the skin and allowing the skin barrier to recover. So let's first just define a few terms because there's a lot of confusion out there because I think a lot of skincare brands are just throwing the word probiotic on their labels and they don't actually mean probiotic. So, you know, so you guys might want to get a little bit more sophisticated and a little more demanding, you know, so that the, uh, the brands are a little bit more transparent about what they're actually using. Um, so first of all, prebiotics. So prebiotics are like food for the good bugs. Uh, you can think about prebiotics like fertilizer ingredients. They basically enrich the environment. They, they really nourish and nurture a uh, diverse uh, group of different species of bacteria. So imagine if you try to plant you know, a seed and you don't have really rich soil, uh, that plant is not going to grow or survive. So prebiotics are amazing when it comes to skincare products. Um, probiotics are the actual living organisms that are thought to confer a health benefit to the host. And those are a little tricky to use in skincare, um, specifically because it makes it very challenging to use preservatives. Preservatives, guys, I know it sounds scary, but they're actually really important in skincare. They're important for preventing contaminants and pathogens like bad bugs, such as fungal organisms, viruses, bad bacteria like staph and strep from growing in your skincare products. So, pre so preservatives are actually really, really important. They're very good. Um, not all preservatives are great, um, but you, you, know, you wanna be careful, you wanna use clean preservatives. Um, but preservatives are sort of what I consider like a necessary evil. They're really important when it comes to skincare. And if you're trying to use a probiotic, a living organism in a skincare product, it makes it really hard to add a preservative because preservatives are meant to kill bacteria. So it's, it gets very complicated, you know, where you try to find a preservative that's going to allow this healthy bacteria to grow, but it's not going to... Um, you know, kill that one off, but it's going to kill off the other potential contaminants. You can see how that could get a little tricky. And then postbiotics. So postbiotics are not living, but they are either metabolites or byproducts of the good bacteria, or they're pieces of bacteria, meaning pieces of DNA, pieces of a bacterial cell wall. And interestingly, postbiotics can also have tremendous benefits for the skin. So as of now, I'm kind of more of a fan of prebiotics and postbiotics 
than I am of probiotics in skincare for a number of reasons. And now for some of my favorite products that I, you know, guys know I'm always testing out different products. And as you can imagine, as soon as a company um, or a brand comes out with a product with some kind of a probiotic technology, I get it in the mail. So these are, I've tested a lot of them. These are some of my favorites. Um, so this one is by Corez. It is a probiotic mask and it's made with Greek yogurt and a microbiome te technology. It is really thick and it's very, very moisturizing. So they say you can use it as a mask for like 10 to 15 minutes, wash it off, or you can leave it on overnight. Um, I find it's fine either way. Um, the only thing that I don't love about this is that it's got a pretty long inky list. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, a lot of ingredients and in there, the last ingredient is parfum or fragrance. In fact, they say parfum slash fragrance. That, if you guys have heard me talk about that, is a little bit of a pet peeve of mine because that one word, parfum, or that one word, fragrance, can represent anywhere from 20 to 100 different ingredients. Um, and those can be potential irritants or potential allergens. So if you have really sensitive skin or you're sensitive to certain fragrances and you wanna try this mask, I would say, you know, put it on and then wash it off because if you leave on a product with a lot of fragrances, it increases your risk of having a problem from those fragrances. So this one's $49. Okay, this is a product that I've actually been recommending for a while if you guys follow me on social media. It's made by the brand Glow Biotics and it's called Hydro Glow Cream Oil. So this one has a postbiotic lysate in it and it also has these sort of light reflecting minerals in it. And it gives you um, sort of a rosy um, tint. So you can put this one on either by itself or I like to mix one or two drops in with my, with my foundation or with my moisturizer. It really does reflect light beautifully um, and it's very moisturizing. This one is $59. Okay, and these are two drugstore products. I always like to share those um, when when I do recommend them because some people are on a tight budget. Um, this is La Roche-Posay. It's the Hydrating Gentle Cleanser. Um, and this is their uh, Lipicar Balm, which is a great moisturizer. Um, so these both contain their prebiotic uh, thermal spring water. Um, and they're both really nourishing, really hydrating, great for sensitive skin. And this is one by Naturopathica. So this is actually a Manuka honey cleansing balm. Um, I have so many patients who love this, but it's a bit pricey. It's $62. So this one also has a probiotic technology and Manuka honey. Um, and you guys know I'm a big fan of honey. It's got a lot of healing, soothing properties. I'm a dermatologist, so I always have to recommend sunscreen, right? Um, so this is one that I recently started testing. It's by the brand Kinship. It's a mineral sunscreen with a probiotic technology in it. It's also um, clean, which I love. That's something that I've been trying to transition over my skincare to mostly clean products. If you guys are interested in clean, I have another video on that, so check that out. Um, but this one, I believe, is about $25. It's got a bit of a tint to it, um, but it does tend to blend very nicely, um, even into skin of color. Okay, so there we go. A quick primer on st the skin microbiome, uh, prebiotic, probiotic, postbiotic, uh, technologies found in skincare and beauty products with some of my favorite recommendations. If you guys found this helpful, um, give it a thumbs up, share it with some friends, comment below uh, if I didn't get to any questions that you have on the topic of skin and probiotics and the microbiome, um, or suggest any other topics that you guys want me to talk about during any of these videos. Um, and as always, just be safe, take time to nourish, and really take care of your skin. You deserve it. All right, guys.